welcome back to my channel and a painting update some of the work I've been doing over the last few weeks um, first up this is a building for the upcoming uh, Border Reva range from Flags of War if you remember Ian sent me these lovely uh, miniatures um, which are part of the Kickstarter which by the time you see this video will have finished um, but I know, and you'll know if you've watched the Plastic Crack on Monday, um, that there's a whole load more of these figures. Based around the war's um, oh, sort of <laughs> intermittent um, feuding that went on between the border families on both sides of the border uh, of Scotland and England uh, through the sort of uh, 16th century. Um, and um, fascinating period. I'm just starting to read up on it. I knew a little bit about it, but not that much. Um, so this is the build. Well, actually, not the figures because I've already shown them. The building is a Sarissa building from this range. Um, it's a, it's a three parter. You can see here. Yeah, this is the um, Bast Bastille Castle Large. There you go. Uh, inside you've got the stables for the animals. Um, you've got another... Whoop, God, I'm trying to do this one-handed. You've got another deck here, which has the, the door floor. So um, this model does actually come with a stepladder, um, which I had planned to paint up and do. Unfortunately, it fell on the floor and my uh, daughter's dog got hold of it. So... <laughs> <laughs> isn't in much state but you can see here there's a chimney in the side there and then there's another floor here it fits on top which uh, has a, the continuing chimney here hole to access it um, and you can see you can fit the figures in really nicely in here and the roof goes on top so nice little model um, not actually I, I, you know, I mentioned before I'm not really a model maker um, and sometimes I find these um, MDF models really challenging to put together because I'm just not very good at them. But this one was pretty good, quite easy. Um, I'm doing the bigger um, tower uh, from the range for the same period, um, which I have to say was a lot less easy to get together than this one was. So um, even then, it's not that bad. Um, taking a lot of paint to get them um, process you've got to, it's really difficult with these MDF buildings they absorb so much paint um, but what I did was spray them with my usual um, uh, Humbrol, uh, Humbrol, my usual Halfords uh, light grey primer paint um, and then I just used art paint actually a mixed bag just to get this sort of off-white sort of tan colour um, mixed it up, applied it liberally because I don't mind with the sort of crafty stuff. You get those big bottles in um, you know, in those sort of cheap kids shops, um, and you can just mix them up, mix them up, and it goes on pretty well actually. Um, and I then washed it with um, oh god, what is it? The art, the 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 dip stuff, army painter dip, um, mid tone, I think it was called. And I applied that liberally all over with a brush. Uh, the roof I uh, used Basilicum Grey um, contrast paint, which actually has come out really nice. It gives it a lovely sort of slaty look. Um, and I'm overall pretty happy with how this came out. So getting ready for this, uh, the rules for the Kickstarter to come back. So I've got some buildings ready to fight out some little skirmishes in. So next up, um, some more terrain or more buildings. More accurately, this is a 15mm La Haye Sant model. Um, it, I picked it up on eBay. It's sort of an odd sort of plastery type material. Um, but um, in fact, I got it and it was already slightly painted. So I'd literally just sprayed it all over again with my standard um, uh, Halfords light grey. And then just dry brushed it well brushed it all back up again with some washes and various other things and because of the texture on the building and on the roof it came out pretty well so um be useful i've already used it actually in an o group game 15 mil o group game which isn't quite in pit keeping but you know a farm's a farm really um so yeah the uh 
the roofing is uh, gore grown to fur um, I forget what the actual color on the I think actually if I remember rightly on the walls themselves I used um, let's say just basically the gray that I that came up with the uh, spray I then just washed it um, with um, uh, skeleton whatever the skeleton um, uh, white uh, contrast paint is um, and that seemed to just bring it out nicely and then it gave a wash with uh, with uh, a dark tone uh, which has sort of made out made the elements of the the recesses and what have you pop out and then a a good dry brush with a deck tan just to sort of give it a sort of worn look I'm quite pleased with how it's come out so it's already been on the table once and I'm sure it will go on the table again very soon so there you go another project finished so and I can't forget the Wars of the Roses stuff and um, after CrackCon um, earlier this year I stopped in at Bosworth picked up a rather nice uh, book which is, shows all the Lords who were present at the battle and what happened to them and a little bit of potted history on them um, and one of the characters in there that I kind of like the look of was Lord Lovell um, and talking to Martin and doing some more research discovered he was uh, one of Richard III's uh, staunchest supporters um, he was rumoured to have been killed at Bosworth but clearly wasn't because he uh, escaped and continued to resist Henry Tudor for some considerable time um, fought at a number of other battles and um, allegedly died having been walled up in a safe place in a manor house and some doubt whether that's actually true uh, but it's a good story all the less so um, this is uh, just the command stand for him. Uh, the model at the back here, um, here that uh, is warp walking away, wiping his sword on a on a cloth. Um, actually, Martin sent me seventh son. Um, he did one with one of his uh, dioramas or little command bases, and I liked it. And he sent me one, which was really nice. It's a sort of uh, he's he's created that figure himself, um, kit, uh, from kit bashed from everything. Um, and I thought in order to make do that one justice, I did a casualty figure resplendent in uh, Tudor uh, um, uh, livery, um, dead on the ground, who's obviously um, met the unfortunate uh, end that the swordsman is wiping his blood off the sword from. Um, the two figures here are... Um, I, I think they are sort of fan more fantasy figures. I just liked the brooding nature of the Lord. Um, he's, I think he's actually supposed to be a paladin, but I just love the idea that he's praying before battle while the man behind him is just killed. And uh, one of Tudor's men uh, probably interrogating him first. Um, and then the archer here drinking from uh, some wine, uh, looted wine. He's, I think he's a foundry figure. Um, and just really came together really nicely and really pleased with them, um, the, the composition. So, yeah, that does mean I'm doing another couple of factions for War of the Roses, and we're starting with uh, Lord Lovell. Um, so, I better show you some more of his troops. So, as promised, here's the first retinue of um, Lord Lovell's. This is uh, Unit Bow and Bill, um, based up according to the. Uh, uh, Hail Caesar rules that Martin, Seventh Son, has uh, developed based on the uh, rules that um, Rick uh, Priestley had developed from the original uh, Hail Caesar rules. Uh, the archers on both wings are um, uh, Perry figures. The guys in the middle are a mixed bag. Uh, there's some foundry figures um, and also some of these uh, more fantasy type figures that I picked up off uh, eBay. I just really like them. Um, I've sort of given it a go at doing the um, delivery. Uh, they would have had, uh, let's say, half yellow, half blue coats. And then they had uh, his em emblem was this sort of uh, white uh, hound, well, white dog. And in fact, um, Richard III already uh, sort of always attributed um, Lovell or his supporters. He you know, referenced having the hound with him and that was uh, Lovell. Um, so I tried to, in my very, very basic attempts to produce 
um, what doesn't look like a white dinosaur hopefully just looks like a sort of vaguely like a dog on the back of these uh, of these retinue troops so first unit done um, probably the first of I, I may mean to do three I think I'll do two um, Bill and Bow and one uh, dismounted knights for the level faction um, that's the first one done so next up, um, some of you may have already seen this on the video that I did uh, unboxing um, and constructing and painting Flames of War uh, Russian 15mm uh, battle group. Um, so I, I won't go into a huge amount of detail on this because if you're interested you can click on the link that I've put up on the corner here. Um, but this is the, the rest of the force that I put together. Um, it's almost entirely uh, battle group I think they're called um, and um, or flames of war basic plastics with a few Skytrex metals in there uh, Skytrex 15 mils actually mixed in pretty well well I mean it's 15 mils so you can't really see very much but I'm gonna sort of say this project is uh, pretty much done I may add some um, artillery at some point but um, I'm planning to use this for O groups. You don't really need o artillery because that's largely off table in O group. Um, but let's start at the top. You've got uh, four um, Su 76 assault guns. Uh, these are T 34 85s. Uh, in O group, you need uh, patrols. So I've done single base patrols of individual men that can be there, combat patrols. Um, in front of them are the um, IS two heavy battle tanks you've got the t-34 76s the earlier war versions um, and then the big assault guns at the back there is the isu 152s the isu 122s uh, a couple of flame t-34s because uh, who doesn't like a flamer and some ba-64s uh, armored cars there uh, then moving forward we've got uh, some artillery, oh, uh, anti-tank guns I guess, you've got the 57s which are the shorter barrels and the 76s there. Then moving forward these are, I'll uh, put my glasses on and see what these are, <laughs> they're so blinking small. These are my infantry for the Russians, these are the submachine gun teams so there is an option for squads to be armed with submachine guns or rifles so this is the submachine gun group. Uh, there's the battalion HQ, which you represent on the table. So I've just taken uh, some of the officer figures and built a sort of mini diorama based around the table. Um, we've got four bases of mortars here. At the front, these are anti-tank rifles. Um, these are flamethrowers, flamethrower squad. You've got the Maxi machine guns, heavy machine guns here. These are all rifle armed um, Russian infantry. Oops, a bent bayonet there. Some of which have got LMGs built in. Got some obs observer squads there. Uh, some scout cars, uh, M3 scout cars, I think they are. Um, these are officer and NCO groups because you need a few of those with these uh, these with O group. Um, and we're back to the T-34 uh, 76s so yeah I'm quite impressed uh, <laughs> quite pleased with myself putting these together they were a joy to paint and I thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed doing them um, and uh, I may may just have bought a Russian uh, sorry German army <laughs> to to build to go against this so I can play some solo games as well because I'm really really enjoying O Group um, and I want to play more so this will probably see the field in a couple of weeks, uh, or some of this we'll do in a game against Jonathan uh, down at the club, hopefully, if we can organise it, and um, they'll get their first thrashing, because I don't think Dan Brown, who did the O Group rules, really likes the Russians very much. <laughs> but there you go. Plenty of options, plenty of troops, good little army there. So next up, this is Lord Joyce of Windsor. Um, People might not know, but I live very close to Windsor, um, and I thought when I saw his name on the list of um, uh, of people, lords at uh, Bosworth in that book that I was talking about earlier, 
Um, I thought he would be a great candidate for a minor lord to put in the army. So uh, this is his banner that I've basically uh, used uh, Photoshop and various other things just to sort of copy from the from the book. Um, and um, yeah, really pleased with this little unit. It's going to be a mounted longbow unit. This is the the dismounted version of it because my rationale is uh, it's a long way to Bosworth from Windsor. So uh, if he headed up to Windsor then his men were probably mounted, so um, I'm going to have another mounted longbow unit. I've got the mounted figures, I have to paint them up at some point, but here are the dismounted ones. Anyway, they're all metal. This is uh, all metal figures. I think they're foundry or cast, whatever the foundry offshoot is, casting room or whatever it is, that's that. Um, li really nice figures, and I do like painting metals, as, as you'll know if you watch this channel for any length of time. Um, so, I say I don't think I'll do any more than one for Joyce. Um, he was actually killed at Bosworth, um, at least the records seem to suggest he was. So, um, uh, ignomin ignominious uh, exit, but um, and not much is all is really known about him. So I've just taken a liberty of making him, as I say, a mounted longbow unit, um, and his mounted versions will arrive at some point when I get round to pay to them. So next up, this is uh, some Prussian 28mm uh, Napoleonic artillery. Uh, they're front rank metal figures. Um, I'm sort of collecting the odd unit here and there of uh, Prussian infantry. I've now got, I've got a few now, about six or seven battalions. Um, so I thought I needed some artillery and commanders to go with it. So I bought this battalion, I think it was, a, they, I think it's called a battalion pack for front rank. Um, they're jolly nice figures. I do like front ranks and I'm so pleased they were saved by Gripping Beast uh, because it's uh, it, it's just wonderful. They're still around. Enjoy painting these up. Dead simple. They're just blues and greys and a bit of red um, turnbacks and what have you. Um, good wash and a bit of highlighting over the top. Wasn't sure about the guns. All sorts of talk about what colours the guns might have been but I decided to go for blue just because it looks neat that way. So um, there you go, Prussian, Britannic, uh, Prussian battery of guns, foot guns ready to support the infantry in due course. And, I'll have, and then I don't have to use any uh, Swedish or other guns <laughs> instead. I can actually use the real things. So next up, um, this is uh, a rather large model. Uh, this is a Hovels resin um, diorama, I guess. It's terrain features. It's basically... Um, Papineau farm from Waterloo um, where the Prussians came on and uh, uh, late in the day and fought the French to a standstill on the flank uh, to relieve um, Wellington's troops and, and it's a massive thing I showed on the stream on the uh, Monday Night Crack podcast the this this barn I mean look at the size of this thing it's enormous um, it's solid they are solid pieces so the lids don't come off the roofs don't come off rather um and it is pretty darn big you can see i put a battalion of of prussian infantry in there just as i show the scale um you've got one two three four five six buildings that are all separate well seven if you count the little one by the gatehouse um and so i think most often i'll probably use these as standalone you know kind of buildings but um I am trying to work out a scenario, and I've got one in mind for doing Papalo Farm. Um, I think it's going to be a sharp practice game. Possibly, somebody was pointing out, maybe it would be a good setting for a Silver Bayonets game, and, and that would also be true. So, whatever I decide, you'll see it, I'm sure, on the channel. But it's a hell of a beast. So, Hobbles 28mm, I think they call it 25mm, but near as damn it, 28mm. Um, farm here very impressed very pl I've had it for years I mean I have had it for probably a couple of years now and it's been sitting in a box waiting for me to get going and painting it and uh, with the commemoration of Waterloo I thought let's get going and I suddenly started to you know sometimes just things snap and you just get into a roll and I hadn't really thought through exactly how I was going to paint it and I found um, it dead easy to do so um, I'm mainly using um, just cheap 
poster paint really well stuff that I bought from um, one of those sort of uh, you know kids like the, in the UK it's called the works but those sort of crafty paints you get um, just because it takes a lot of paint to do this but then using um, generous amounts of washes a little bit of dry brushing um, multi layers of the paint uh, has given the right kind of effect so I'm quite pleased with them so anyway that's that one done so having done all those Russian 15mm um, uh, troops for um, O Group, I thought I need to do um, an opposition. Um, so I started on the German force, so I bought um, some Flames of War box sets for plastics, but um, the box set I bought didn't ha have um, two of the iconic tanks of the German Second World War. Well, armored fighting vehicles not tanks but armored fighting vehicles of the war as far as i thought um so interesting i did a poll um on on the uh, plastic crack podcast facebook page about what people considered to be the iconic german second world war uh, tanks um and so rather surprised me um how many people got it wrong <laughs> i'm joking i'm joking People's views were basically that the Panzer IV was iconic over everything else, which was uh, extraordinary to me. Um, and Panzer IV is, it was um, definitely a workhorse of the Second World War fleets, but I, to me, there were two that I thought were iconic, um, stood out well. Probably three iconic tanks for me was the Tiger I, the Stug, Stug III, and the Panther. Um, but as I say, the Panzer IV came out tops, um, which was uh, quite amusing to me. But anyway, by the by, um, th so I started work on um, on the German fleet and uh, leapt into uh, these Stugs. So these are Skytrex metal figures, uh, metal vehicles. Um, the box sets I've bought f uh, from uh, for Flames of War don't have any Stugs. Um, so I had bought some Skytrex 15 mils. And they fit in pretty well actually so uh, while, they, while I was waiting for the plastics to arrive I thought I'd make a start so uh, that is two Stugs done um, just used sort of uh, what a interpretation of a later war camo um, which I think works okay I'm no expert on camo and I'm no expert on painting but it was all hand painted with um, with a blunt very old brush that just sort of dabbing the uh, the, the browns and the greens onto a Dunkel Hel Dunkel Geld uh, undercoat um, and then thoroughly washed and then a bit of a dry brush over the top and I think it that comes out pretty well actually quite pleased with them so there you go two stug twos so to me when you talk about iconic tanks of the German um, Second World War armies there's only one that jumps to the top of the queue for me was the Tiger One um, and so uh, this is another Skytrex metal uh, Tiger One, I, I think it's just a brilliant, brilliant vehicle. Um, always loved a Tiger. I'm not sure in, in O Group how many I'm going to need, so I thought one was plenty, um, one to be going on with. Um, as I say, this is a metal Skytrex model. Um, again, the box set that I'm getting from Flames of War didn't have any uh, metal figures in it. Uh, sorry, didn't have any Tigers in it. So, um, all Stugs, so I bought one of each, or two Stugs and one Tiger, and painted them up. Again, exactly the same with the Stugs, Dunkelgelt, um, uh, well, I, paint, I sprayed them all black first, then Dunkelgelt over the top, um, and then um, dab, dappled with a, I think that's the word, um, the camo pattern with a, an old bluntish, um, uh, old, sort of fairly crispy brush, to be honest just to sort of get that sort of uh, hand applied look and then um, washed it with um, camo and also non oil and um, then a gentle dry brush over the top and uh, quite pleased with how it worked out nice little model good little model there you go and then next up um, because I do love my little bit of um, sort of features for the table can be objectives or what have you um, these are a couple of um, resin models that I picked up from that American company that I think is now the guy's retired. Arcachon, I think is his name was, um, uh, did this lovely, well it was the one where I showed the Norman Tower uh, previously and um, I also bought this little canoe, um, Native American canoe drawn up on a big 
and um, I just thought it was a lovely little model, really fun, and I'm quite pleased how it's come out. Um, the rocks and, and these um, bits of wood um, are all moulded onto the uh, onto the base, and I've just basically built them up with different colours and dry brushes and what have you. Um, the, the base is through, showing through there, but I've used um, sort of bits of sand and um, other base material to sort of accentuate and a couple of little tufts just to bring that out and um, yeah really pleased with the effect I think it's uh, it'll be nice so it not, doesn't have any strategic point or well, real sort of need on the table but in a relevant North um, uh, American sort of setting it'll be a nice feature to put on the table or possibly an objective or just a way marker or whatever um, but I thought it was fun so pleased to do that and then uh, I think this was a freebie uh, with all the money I spent with him, he also included this um, stack of barrels um, which I just painted up because they're useful for any kind of period um, just as an objective marker or presumably could be in a skirmish game a cover marker a cover piece of terrain so um, yeah really really happy with how that little thing came out I think it, the effect is really really nice and then finally because I don't want you to think that I'm sort of ignoring uh, the um, War of the Roses stuff. Um, so, as I mentioned earlier in the video, I'm uh, building through another faction of Richard III from Bosworth, given my trip into uh, the Bosworth um, Heritage Centre on my way back from Crackcom 2. And um, I decided to do Richard III's Force just for a bit of a laugh. So, I picked up this medieval cannon. It's a front rank one. I just love the guy hiding behind the shield. That's one of the reasons why I bought it. Now I don't know whether he's supposed to be protecting the guy about to light the fuse or whether he's just... but I, I kind of like the idea that he's sort of shielding himself and the other guy from the cannon exploding. Like a shield would really help with that but <laughs> just it amused me so that's how I've done it. Got the guy lighting the touch paper um, sort of trying to do it at arms as far away as he possibly can um, with the guy hiding behind the shield going I'm not happy about being this close and then the guy with the um, reload tool at the back there sort of very nonchalant like hey come on guys let's just get it done <laughs> um, so I've done them in uh, Richard III's livery his emblem was uh, the, the white boar now I couldn't find, um, I didn't trust myself to draw a white boar and I couldn't find one that was exactly right but I did find these, um, trans actually shield transfers um, that um, I picked up some time ago on a kick, well not that, a couple of months ago on a kickstarter and um, they're white boars, it's not quite the same sort of style as white boar as you see on the uh, flags but I thought it's close enough um, so I put one on the back of this guy and obviously one on the shield um, just to make it absolutely certain that these are Richard III's men about to unleash hell with their cannon so there you go that has been a busy couple of weeks um, certainly cracking through all those 15 mils made uh, <laughs> has made time has uh, sort of turned out a lot of figures in the last couple of weeks um, they are so easy to paint 15 mils especially Second World War there's just no there's no real subtlety to them you have to do lots of turnbacks and all that kind of stuff um, really enjoyed doing just getting a volume out which is which is kind of satisfying so a lot of figures done a lot of fun done and uh, all of these figures will be seeing the table at some point fairly soon I think um, particularly the O group I think Jono and I are planning a game next week uh, where he's probably going to twonk the Russians when they first make their first appearance but um, it should be fun either way anyway Stay safe, stay well, and I hope you're getting lots of hobbying in. Like, subscribe, hit the what's it button if you feel like it, be a patron. Um, I need to get my head around patrons. Um, apologies, I've had a couple over the over the years, um, and I really haven't done an awful lot for them, but I need to try and set that up um, and do, I mean, I know it's a bit of a thank you um, for me producing content, but I feel also there's an obligation um, to do something a bit special with the patrons so I'm going to try and have a think about what I can do whether that's doing some patron only things naming people in games that sort of thing um, so anyway thoughts suggestions in the comments about what to do what you'd like from patrons if you are a patron what you'd like to what you'd like people to do 
because that would help me no end. Anyway, not a begging letter, honestly. Um, just if you want to, no pressure. Anyway, stay safe, stay well, and I will see you again soon. This is Dom, signing out. Thank you.